good afternoon students how are you all i think you all are good okay okay students i i hope that you are learning your daily lessons is it right okay learn the daily lessons at least read two three times you will understand and uh, no need to study by heart but you have to learn that one very well okay so daily lessons you read and understand and learn so in commerce now we are in the 16th lesson okay consumer protection so in that one next heading we are going to learn is united nations guidelines for the consumer protection how the united nations we know that united nations uh, that uh, uno general uh, uno in that one the general assembly it has passed one resolution okay the united nations organization general assembly has passed one resolution on april 9 april 9 1985 okay 9th april 1985 the it has stopped it has passed one resolution that what it has said it has given some guidelines okay that guidelines is for the consumer protection and it has asked all its member countries to follow those policies and laws in order to protect the interest of the consumers okay so they have asked those member countries they have to pass their own policies also taking consider considering this guidelines they have to pass their own uh, policies in order to protect the consumers okay so the objectives of the un guidelines for consumer protection they have some objectives why this un has uh, given some guidelines for its member countries the main objective is to assist the member countries in order to maintain adequate protection for their consumers okay that is the main objective they have to uh, maintain adequate protection for their for their people for their people or the country people's protection must be there that is the main objective second one they have to um, have some production and distribution pattern in that one they have to respond to the needs and desire of the consumers that means they have to uh, satisfy that that needs of the consumers or the wants of the consumers must be satisfied and there must be uh, their proper encouragement for the having the good contact between the producers and the people those who distribute the goods and service to the ultimate consumers okay then they have to assist there they, they there may not be any abusive business practices or mal practices or if they abuse the customers that must be stopped at the national level and at the international level that should be there then they have to encourage they must encourage some volunteer volunteering groups consumer groups we learnt you know in the yesterday's portion so they have to encourage to form some volunteering group okay and uh, they if there is some international support international cooperation must be there so not only within the country they have to uh, get the international cooperation also for the consumer protection because many of the products uh, produced internationally outside the countries one may be imported so there they have to produce properly so it is not only confined with the within the boundaries of the nation but it is beyond the nation because the goods produced in our country may be exported or we may import the goods which are produced outside the country okay so they have to encourage the international cooperation in the field of consumer protection then they have to encourage the development of market condition that means uh, the 
consumers may not be allowed to pay a very high price. Okay, they must have more choice for less price, for lower prices. Prices may not be so high. Okay, all these are the objectives of the United Nations guidelines for consumer protection. Next heading, consumer legislation. What are the legislatures available for the protection of the consumer's interest? That means what are the act we have in India. Okay. First one, Indian Contract Act. Okay. Indian Contracts Act 1982. 1982. Some of the legislation, some of the acts they may ask you. Okay. Then the Sale of Goods Act. The Sale of Goods Act. It is 1982. Then Essential Commodities Act. Essential Commodities Act. Some of the act they may ask for with the year. Okay, 1955. Indian Contracts Act, the Sale of Goods Act 1982, then the Essential Commodities Act 1955, then the Agricultural Products Grading and Marketing Act. Agricultural Products Grading and Marketing Act. Marketing Act 1937. They will be regulating the supply of the agricultural product, products. Here the essential commodities. We know the rice, all the things that we use daily. Isn't it essential commodities? Sale of goods act commonly for all the consumer goods. Okay. Then contract act. Because if there is a contract, the person, uh, uh, one who make the contract, the, both the people, okay. So that will be there. Everything to protect the consumer's interest. Okay, then the Prevention of Food Adulteration Act. Separately for adulteration, okay. Prevention of Food Adulteration Act. We know what is adulteration. They will mix uh, stone with the grains, then papaya seeds with uh, uh, pepper. Okay, that one. Separate act is there. The Prevention of Food Adulteration Act 1954. There is one act. Then another act. The sixth one, Weights and Measures Act. We know weights and measures that uh, we will weigh, you know, weighing machine. So they may not do any malpractice in the weight itself. When we purchase uh, one, one kg product, we, we may have only three quarters of the product instead of one kg. They may reduce around 100 gram or 200 gram in one kg. So, they, they, they will check. There may not be any malpractice due because of the underweight. Okay. So, that Act 1958, that will protect against the underweight of the products. Okay. The next one, the Trademark Act. Trademark. We have for the good products, we have the trademark, isn't it? So, there they may not change that fraudland mark may not be there. So they will uh, prevent the fraudland trademark available in the market. Okay, Trademark Act 1999. Then the next one, Competition Act. Competition Act 2002. Here, competition must be there, but it may not be a 
an acute competition unhealthy competition may not bear there there will prevent the acute or unhealthy competition okay then indian standard institution that we call as in short isi okay now it is uh, known as bis that means bureau of indian standards okay indian standard institution it is called now bis okay bureau of indian standard this one 1952 when it was started it was 1952 now they have changed that name as bureau of indian standard for standardized product only they will give this simple bis okay so they are uh, having this one in order to produce the standardized products then the drugs and magic remedies related to the drugs and any magic remedies that were related to the advertisement okay they may not have any false advertisement related to drugs and any other magical products okay then drugs and cosmetics act cosmetics we know most of our indians they spend a lot large amount especially the ladies isn't it we too will spend more money in the cosmetics then we in we be used to apply on our face or the skin if any damage occurs there is an act okay drugs and cosmetics act in order to provide the healthy products that it may not do any any harm to the uh, people okay that safety drugs only must be uh, provided for the customers okay that one. then 12th one food safety standard act food safety standard act here the food safety must be there all the foods uh, it may not have any um, harmful chemicals in order to preserve them okay so and the um, food may not be spoiled when it is uh, preserved in the tin containers okay in order to um, that they, they distribute the safe for food this act is useful okay that it is helping the producers and distributors to sell the safety food items for the customers then the air act air prevention and control of pollution especially for pollution nowadays we know very well the air is polluted because of the harmful gases isn't it released from the factories and industries so there is one act then public liability insurance act public liability insurance act if any accident occurs okay there they have they will provide the that insurance claim immediately so for that one insurance act is there again the last one narcotic drugs and psychotropic substance narcotic drugs we have heard that brown sugar and all isn't it that is produced in order uh, maybe either for the educational purpose or for the chemical industries purpose understand only for that purpose they may use their they may not use for the ordinary people to consume and to get sick they may not uh, introduce those products in the market okay so they will prevent the uh, manufacture or distribution of this narcotic drugs and psychotropic substance we have heard isn't it uh, that brown sugar and all if they eat something 
they will be they will be becoming like psycho people isn't it getting uh, mentally sick so that they will prevent this type of drug uh, producing drugs and distributing to the people unless for the uh, educational purpose okay next we will learn consumer protection act in india what is the act they we have in order to protect the interest of the consumers so consumer protection act this act was passed in the year 1986 okay consumer protection act was passed in the year 1986 that is why it is called consumer protection act 1986 this act came into force from 15/4/1987 okay they may ask when this consumer protection act came into force so the consumer protection act came into force from 15th april 1987 then again after many years in 1993 they have made one amendment act amendment means uh, they have made some changes amended amended the act okay if they make any changes in the act that is called amendment that is done in 1993 and since it is this c o p r a together it is called copra in short it is called copra consumer protection act okay it is called copra why it is what is the main aim we know very well to protect the interest of the consumers or they have to not only protect and they have to promote the interest of the consumers okay or they have to uh, they have to safeguard the interest of the consumers from some defective goods damaged goods or unfair trade practices from adulterated goods from hoarding okay all that exploitation from that one they have to protect the interest of the consumers protect and promote the interest of the consumers is the main aim of this act okay that is the main aim then if there is any grievances for the consumers what we do we will um, file a complaint isn't it that complaint will be how to guide the consumers if there is any grievance that is done okay we will learn that one in detail okay how they are doing that we have district forum district wise we have state wise uh, that uh, forum is there then national wise court is there okay three tier court district wise then uh, state wise district uh, we will learn in that uh, heading very clearly okay students that one uh, now we have the uh, we will learn the features of the indian consumers act okay the features of indian consumers act we will learn okay these features i will explain students it is one of the fourth mark question four mark four mark five mark question okay long answer fifth question answer not seventh question answer it is okay i will explain what it is what are the features of this consumer protection act what they do we know first they uh, they are protecting the consumers against the products and service which are harmful to the health of the consumers what is the meaning if any uh, product that will harm make harm for the uh, to the health of the consumers must be prevented okay they will not support the distribution of those harmful products second one they will they are protecting the consumers from the breach of contract by sellers or manufacturers they may make a contract with, by, uh, for supplying the good products quality products once they uh, manufacturers or the you know the 
uh, middlemen or the consumers when they receive the product if they find the quality is not good that do harm to the health of the consumers they will protect so second point protecting the consumers from the breach of contract they that means the going against the contract is called the breach of contract by the sellers or the manufacturers then ensuring the consumers with the supply of goods at fair quality that we know so they have to ensure that the very quality products are supplied to the consumers next point safeguarding consumers against misleading and untrue messages communicated through advertisement so if any false advertisements are given that must be must be stopped okay they have to help the consumers from uh, that uh, giving false advertisement okay then they have to ensure the fair price not that not the high, very high price very low price fair price means the reasonable price okay then they uh, the consumers must get the goods without any interruption without any break okay whenever the consumers need the products they have to get the products that is called an interrupted supply of goods that must be there okay all these uh, uh, these must be uh, checked by the act okay then not only the uninterrupted supply fair price they uh, the consumers must get the goods in correct quantity and in correct size okay quantity should not be less for that one only we have learned the measure act okay then they may not uh, do they have any unfair trade practices okay maybe having the um, many ways they will cheat the consumers okay that that may not be too then pollution any kind of pollution should not be there consumers must be protected against various kinds of pollution then because of the evil competition the consumers may not be affected okay for protecting the consumers against the evil effect of the competition okay students all these ways the these are the main features of the indian consumers protection act 1986 okay students now i will mark and give you the question answers write a short note on consumer protection act okay consumer protection act 148 148 here this point you can write okay the central government enacted a comprehensive law called consumer protection act that one and 